The issue at hand is, what are the Saudis and the Saudi regime looking to accomplish by creating the Live Tour and becoming players in the world golf scene? We can imagine some of the goals that are looked to be, looking to be accomplished by the Saudi regime. Among them include getting a seat at the table in world sport. This is something that we've seen in soccer, something we've seen in Formula One, and something we are going to continue to see in other realms of sport. The Live Tour has a lot of new innovative formats and a lot of much awaited, long awaited changes to the sport of golf. However, it is important that we consider where the money that funding this sport is coming from. The Saudi regime funding the Live Tour are responsible for many reprehensible moral and, and human rights abuses. The question facing sports fans right now is, to what extent should this matter when it comes to our sports consuming appetites? The Saudi regime is likely not going to stop with golf. It likely didn't, it didn't stop with soccer, it didn't stop with Formula One. They are going to seek other avenues to gain mainstream influence in sport, largely because of the great power and the concept that you may have heard of called sports washing. The idea that you can use sports to ameliorate concerns about your government's uh, actions. The Saudi regime has a lot of reasons to try and sports wash some of their recent uh, human rights uh, atrocities, including the killing of journalist Jamal Khashoggi. This league is another way to change narratives about the Saudi regime in general, in the same way the Saudi Grand Prix and other sporting ventures that the Saudi regime have, have tried in the past. So the Live Tour certainly is not the only attempt to sue sports wash the Saudi regime, but likely also will not be the last. <laughs>